In 1995, the release of a grainy black and white film, just a few minutes long, caused a worldwide sensation. It appeared to show an alien from outer space undergoing an autopsy. Was it for real? Was this evidence of one of the greatest scientific discoveries of all time? Or was it a hoax? No one's been able to offer conclusive proof one way or the other. That's until I came along. For more than 10 years now, that piece of film has divided opinion right across the world. Some say it's irrefutable proof of alien life on other planets. Some say it's the greatest hoax of all time. Well, I'll let you into a secret. It's a fake. But maybe not all of it. In this programme, the men behind the 1995 alien autopsy film talk for the first time about how they came to shoot and star in this sensational footage. I'll meet the man who made the alien. He's from Manchester, not Jupiter. And the mysterious masked figure behind the glass. I'll also put to the test their earth-shattering claim that it's not a hoax at all, but a reconstruction of a real alien autopsy carried out almost 50 years before. The sleepy town of Roswell, New Mexico, has become the center of the UFO universe. According to legend, in July 1947, an alien spaceship crash-landed in the desert just a few miles away, and its occupants, four aliens, that's right, creatures from outer space, were captured by the US military and taken to this top secret hangar. Conspiracy theorists and ufologists believe it triggered a giant cover-up by the US government. And the Roswell story has become the most prominent tale in worldwide UFO folklore. 1995, the Roswell crash story surfaced again, amazingly this time, in London. On May the 5th of that year, in a small, private cinema like this one, the now notorious alien autopsy footage was screened for the first time. On that spring day, the Museum of London, in the heart of the city, became the centre of the universe, or at least the known universe. The world waited in anticipation as a hundred invited guests gathered at the invitation of businessman Ray Santilli and his friend and confidant, Gary Shufield. Though experienced TV executives, they were largely unknown to their audience, which had been hand-picked to maximise conflict and controversy. There were journalists, ufologists, church leaders from all religions, believers and non-believers. And they were about to witness something quite remarkable. In 1995, I received an invitation to attend uh, a film screening, which I was told was going to be quite extraordinary. That phone call was when I first heard the name Ray Santilli. On that morning, these three gentlemen came into the lecture theatre and one of them gave me a tape. And we put, I put it into the machine and I started to run the tape down. And when we came to the start of the programme, he said, stop, stop, stop. OK, I stopped. He said, give me the tape. I said, well, he can stay in the machine, that's OK. No, he said, give me the tape. When we're ready to run it, I'll give it back to you, and we're right on the start mark. OK. The curtains parted, and I think a caption came up on the screen to say something like, uh, you are about to see a piece of film which we believe was taken uh, in or near Roswell, New Mexico, in 1947. Within the first 20, 30 seconds, I thought, what am I looking at here? This looks like a home movie. Grainy, slightly shaky, uh, black and white uh, film showing uh, a body of some sort, obviously not human, uh, lying um, on its back on a, a table or a raised platform of some sort. 
There was stunned silence in the auditorium when the film was shown, and you could literally hear a pin drop. And uh, people were sat open mouthed, others were taking sketches because there were no cameras allowed. They were. <laughs> they were re he really had them, you know. And I really thought, you idiots, I mean, this is rubbish. What's going on here? You know, <laughs> he's playing with them. And this is the film that was screened that day at the Museum of London. It appears to feature two US Army pathologists performing an autopsy on an alien from outer space. Behind a glass screen, a masked scientist is taking notes. After the screening, it was really a mixed reaction. But most of them, like myself, when I'd first seen it, wanted to know more. Well, he said, what do you think? And I said, well, to be honest, it could have been you in that gown and you could have shot that two weeks ago. He didn't answer that. Suddenly, the, the two people who, I think, had been the ones to search us on our way in, almost physically picked Ray Santilli up and took him out of the room. Uh, clearly, someone there didn't want him talking to the ufologists. Within weeks of the Museum of London screening, the footage was shown on TV programmes all over the world. The authenticity of the film was investigated, the authenticity of Ray and Gary was investigated, but no one was able to prove conclusively that the alien autopsy was faked. Tonight on Town Meeting, the alien autopsy. Reality? Or hoax. I've seen the film. Hey, wait and a I second. Have Are you being serious? It. it shows an alien being worked on. E mesmo chegados ao caso do dia, o caso Roswell, de um filme. The belief that we are not alone is gathering interest. A film suggests that aliens crash landed near Roswell, New Mexico, in 1947, and they were even autopsied by the U.S. Air Force. Weird, isn't it? So where on earth did this amazing autopsy footage come from? Santilli and Shufield were in Cleveland, Ohio in 1992 looking for rare home movie footage of Elvis when Ray Santilli claims he was approached by an ex-US Army cameraman. The cameraman offered to sell him a film he claimed he'd shot at Roswell in 1947 following the supposed crash of a spacecraft. Intrigued, Ray put on a pair of shorts, a loud shirt, and headed for Florida. The film Ray claims he was shown there in the cameraman's home in Clearwater on the Gulf Coast featured the autopsy of more than one alien and an apparent examination of UFO crash wreckage. Fourteen years later, using interrogation techniques, I learned, watching too many detective movies, I've gone in search of the truth. Who sold you the film? The cameraman. What's his name? I'm not telling you. Why not? Because it, at the time, um, it was a promise uh, at the beginning that I wouldn't, I wouldn't disclose his name. I never have done. So where do you fit into the whole operation? I was actually with Ray in Cleveland. Um, he disappeared off for a couple of days, didn't know where he'd gone, what he was doing. And um, it turned out that he went down to... Um, to Florida uh, to see the cameraman. I knew nothing of this at the time. And after the event, he told me where he'd been and what he'd seen. There were 22 uh, reels of film, uh, which probably ran for about uh, four or five minutes each. They were very small reels. I just remember how clear in his mind he was that this guy was real. You know, if you walk into someone's house and you see the way they live and you see the pictures on the wall and you, you meet their wife, you, you know, you have an absolute understanding from the moment you walk in through that door whether they're genuine or not. But you didn't leave with the film that night. No. He Why was, not? He was a tough cookie. So how long did it take you to negotiate a deal with them? About two years, eventually. You know, it, uh, um, we didn't have the cash at the time. And... Uh, uh, and it was uh, it's a subject which, you know, you can't really go to the bank and, you know, and, and, and take a loan out for it. You know, it was just one of those things where um, when, when the time was right and we had the cash, we could then take the punt. How much cash did you pay him? Can you disclose that? It, would be, it wouldn't be proper for me to, to take. And was this a small amount of money, a medium amount of money, a large amount of money, a massive amount of money? Um, in your terms, not a lot of money. 
Ray and Gary have until now always claimed that the film shown at the Museum of London in 95 is the same original footage he bought from the cameraman in Florida. This, at any rate, is what he told the TV companies who he gave the film to for free. We gave that film to broadcasters purely on the condition that they investigate it. We didn't care whether they said the film was genuine or not, but I banked on broadcasters um, doing the professional job they do in stirring up the public and, and, and investigating this. I, I, I did bank that on, on the fact that they would be able to, to kick this into gear, and they did. But the other thing they were banking on, understandably, was that their chance discovery of proof of life on other planets would turn out to be a bit of a money spinner as well. I first heard of uh, Ray Santilli around about um, April 1995 uh, when he approached one of my reporters uh, with a story that he had exclusive footage. In this particular case, it was something which we couldn't not look at because uh, were it true, it would probably have been bigger than Jesus. They'd clearly been to other newspapers uh, who had offered, I think, somewhere around probably 30, 40,000 uh, pounds. News of the World always likes to pride itself on its ability to pay more, so we topped that offer and offered 50 to see the tape. There was a sort of a, a smoke and mirrors type of uh, conversation between us and uh, Ray Santilli where he was coming up with all sorts of reasons why it couldn't be produced immediately. He assumed that it would be a matter of tape in one hand, brown envelope full of cash in the other. And it was at that point that we told him it would be after publication and publication would only occur once we had had the, the tape verified by a number of experts. And at this point he began to get very, very nervous. And immediately after that conversation, all contact between ourselves and Ray Santilli evaporated. He disappeared off the radar screen. So what do we have so far? An apparent autopsy on an alien from outer space, shot in 1947 in 16mm film, and then almost 50 years later bought from an unnamed cameraman in Florida. But while that's the story they've stuck to all these years, it turns out... It's not the whole story, because for the first time in public, Ray Santilli and Gary Shufield are about to reveal the true tale of the alien autopsy. Who starred in your film? Are you there? Yes, I'm there. We had to, to build a, a very precise set. And I'll reveal to you some of the other characters involved in their story, all of them from this planet. Did you poke or prod or yeah, touch the alien? Too yeah, to take it home with me. Well, we got some uh, sheep's brains and... Uh, Set them in jelly, uh, raspberry jelly, I seem to recall. There wasn't any difficulty in, in asking people not to talk. In 1995, two ordinary British blokes, Grayson Tilly and Gary Shufield, screened a film of an autopsy on an alien, which they say was shot in 1947 by a US Army cameraman in Roswell, New Mexico. But this isn't the whole truth. Ray still maintains that he saw a real alien autopsy with the mysterious cameraman back in 1992. But by the time he went away to raise the money to buy the film two years later, the vast majority of it had been damaged beyond repair. He'd opened the canisters in 1992 and, you know, for a period of two years, it had, unfortunately, um, humidity to deal with and heat to deal with. And, 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 and the, the film just oxidised. It, it came off in your hand as you, as you looked at the, at the film and as you, as you did that, you know, your, your hands would be black. I was in his office when the, when the box arrived with all the, 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 the film cans. Uh, the thing that sticks in my memory was the smell. And obviously it, it turned out that we had a, a hell of a problem here. So this business deal, which had taken you two years mm. to negotiate, mm. suddenly had just... Yeah. crumbled in your fingers. That's why, that's why I'm not a good businessman. So, it was a bad purchase. I think Ray's other main concern was that he'd raised the money, bought these, uh, very much in good faith and from good memory, and unfortunately what turned up was not what, what he had seen in terms of the, uh, the quality of the image. So the plot thickens. A whole heap of money paid out and no alien autopsy to show for it. But I've seen the film, you've seen the film, the world's seen the film. What have we been watching all these years? A fake? 
I didn't fake alien footage. I didn't suggest you did. No, Mr. Santani. we restored it. Restored it. Mm. So you restored it from what? Um, it, from a very po poor imagery to something that, 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 well, to something that you've seen today and has become very famous. It's no different from someone restoring a work of art like the Mona Lisa or or, 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 or the Sistine Chapel. Hoax would be your word, not mine. What would you describe it as? It was clearly a restoration of uh, existing materials. Clearly? Clearly. When they say they clearly restored the film, they actually mean they reshot it. The story of how they did it is a great British caper. Ant and Deck liked it so much, they've made a movie about it. Ant plays Gary, Deck plays Ray. Or is that the other way around? So, for the first time in public, Ray Santilli and Gary Shufield, two London businessmen, admit they staged a fake autopsy on a fake alien. This is not 1947. These men don't work for the US military. They're not even scientists. And this, um, alien isn't from outer space. But what they are saying is that the film they actually made is based on a real alien autopsy. And not all of this footage is fake. According to them, this is no B-movie, and aliens did crash land at Roswell. Something like this comes along once in a lifetime, and I think we had a responsibility to, to take this message and what we'd seen and, and deliver it to the public in the best way that, that we could. So although Ray was very tempted to walk away, and I didn't blame him, um, we decided fairly quickly to see if there was any way we could make this work. How much of the original film survives? Um, the physical film, all of it, but the quality of it, uh, dreadful, um, and a few frames here and there. And um, it was from those, f those frames that we were able to reconstruct and restore. So where did you actually shoot your restoration? Was it in a studio? Was it in America? Was it in Britain? Where did it happen? It was in London. It was in, um, just off of Camden Town, and it was in a small flat. We'd converted a living room, and that became the set for the uh, autopsy. Um, and we had materials came in from all over the world. Who starred in your film? I can't tell you all the people who, um, who appeared in it, but um, certainly... Are you there? Yes, I'm there. Um, and two or three other people. The suits were so uncomfortable and so hot, we had to keep swapping around, and you could only do it for so long. Who owned the flat? The flat was owned by a, um, a member of the, the team, or a family of a member of the team. And it was an empty flat. And when you were filming your reconstruction, um, how convinced were you that it was going to work? I think the end result speaks for itself. It's fantastic, and maybe I should have had more faith in the people around me at the time, because I just didn't know how it was going to turn out, but it was a marvellous, marvellous piece of work. Ray and Gary have asked me to meet them here in central London. They say they're now going to introduce me to a key member of the alien autopsy team. Someone who's never spoken about this before. Someone who's never even been identified with the hoax. Or sorry, restoration, as they like to call it. If that's the case, this really is a world exclusive. Either that or they're just uh, tagging me along. Eamon here. Thank you. I've been granted an audience with the most significant member of Ray and Gary's reconstruction team. It's the first time he's ever spoken about his role. Ray and Gary have insisted on being present. I've insisted on a hidden camera. Well, you know, I'm an investigator, OK? Uh, I just got a call from uh, a friend of mine who doesn't wish to be named at the moment, and uh, he asked me could uh, I make something for... Uh, well, work with Gary and Ray, and I said, yeah, I would. And that something turned out to be, you're telling me, the alien in the autopsy? Yes. How long did it take you to actually create the alien we saw in the film? Uh, about three and a half weeks, including, you know, sculpting, moulding, casting, painting, preparing the effects. Now I've got all three of them talking. The next stage is either the thumbscrew 
or the cinema? I've opted for the cinema. And who's the doctor? Who's the who's the who's carrying out the autopsy? Yeah, that's John. That's John. That's yeah, it's John. Yeah, I think it's yeah, well, it certainly yeah, one of our team. That, that's, that's, a, I, I did probably... I did the effects on the uh, on the alien that I created. Yeah. You're always worried on the day that you know it's not going to bleed right or it's going to look stupid or it's not going to look real or you can you know there's going to be some silly mistake and you can, you, you can see what's being done and so all that's going through your mind all the time so you you're quite focused but at the same time you you, you can't help but stop and have a laugh now and again get those outfits off that you couldn't breathe in at all and get some air and a <laughs> and a drink you know go and listen to catch up with the football on the radio in the back room things like that uh, yeah it was it was a quite a fun atmosphere really good fun how did you get the anatomy right this thing bled uh, well that was the old uh, butcher's boy trick and uh, you basically take a knife put some blood on one side turn away from the camera and then draw it like a use it like a quill and as you draw the the knife across the surface it looks as if it's bleeding couldn't be more simple the alien had brains it had entrails it had sheep's brains and uh, chicken's entrails i have to say i don't know if you guys remember the smell was awful oh, the smell will live with me forever yeah, yeah. it was horrendous well, we got some uh, sheep's brains and uh, set them in jelly and uh, for the leg wound I used a, a sheep's le uh, knuckle joint. Where did you get those from? From uh, butchers in Smithfield Market where, I'd near where I lived. My mate Trevor. Okay, so I've come to Smithfield Meat Market to check out John's awful story. No, no, not that I don't believe him. I don't mean his awful, his, his story about awful. Anyway, let's see what this Trevor fella knows. Morning. Looking for Trevor. Yeah, I'm Trevor. Well, no, no argument with you, Trevor. You can put the knife down. Trevor. Yeah? Ever hear of a guy called John Humphreys? Yeah. John Humphreys, right old character. He used to come into my shop and buy all different bits and pieces of offal and bones and make up an alien. He, he, did he, he told you what he wanted them for? He said what I want is to make an alien like, uh, for, for some sort of science fiction film. So then you came forward with the technical advice? Yeah, I told him what to get, like all the offal, all the hearts, the liver, the lights, all the lungs. Oh, stop all, it. All the bo bones and bits and pieces to buy buckets of blood. Buckets of blood? Yeah, just yeah. To, to colour it all and make it look effective. And did you never see the film? No, no, I, I used to think he was making it up. Never. Did you ever sell him a, 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 a leg of lamb with a joint in it? Well, I used to do him stuff like this. Here, I'll show you. These were the lamb things where he used to make the fingers out of and all that. Oh. He used to get the joints there, they used to tuck into there, he used to staple that so it all moved together and then he could cover it then with all hair and bits and pieces to make it look real. So there you have it, the secret of making great aliens. And think about it, if Ray and Gary's story is true and they were reconstructing and not hoaxing, then the greatest scientific discovery of all time was successfully recreated with sheep offal and the leftovers from a good Sunday dinner. Amazing. So what about after filming? What did they do with the evidence? Then, to keep this secret, you've got to dispose of the body. Mm. What happened there? The body was cut up into small bits and uh, burnt. We basically cut them up into small pieces and uh, with bin liners and spread them across London. Bodies, plural? Yes, we did two autopsies. The first went wrong. And for the first time ever, exclusive pictures of that initial failed attempt at an autopsy reconstruction. If you notice, alien number one didn't have a leg wound, but the poor thing got disemboweled just the same. Whether it was alien number one or alien number two they were chopping up, they realized that attention to detail was very important if they were going to convince the world that this was, in fact, US military film from 1947. 
What about the um, care and attention with the filmmaking equipment, say the camera that you used? We went to a great deal of trouble to get the right camera, um, the correct film stock, um, and we went to a great deal of effort to get the, the, the right materials. Um, and they, didn't, they couldn't look like antiques because, you know, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, these instruments, surgical instruments, and, I mean, they had to be new. Yeah. And then there's the film supposedly showing wreckage recovered from the crashed UFO at Roswell. This was also part of the package Ray says he bought from the army cameraman. Strange hieroglyphics, six-fingered handprints. There's an explanation for this as well. What are we seeing here? It's footage that's, uh, that's been uh, termed debris footage. And um, at the time of the crash, he not only filmed the autopsy, but he had filmed um, the crash site itself, um, the removal of the, uh, of, the, of the bodies and the removal of, of debris. And are you saying that's original film, that survived? That did not survive. That was in the same state as the, uh, the original footage. And what you see there is a recreation. And John, were you behind the recreation of that? Yes, I made uh, I made some of the debris uh, footage. Yeah. Had you any interpretation on that, or any guidance from from Ray and Gary as to what you were supposed to be recreating, and what purpose, what use it had? And it seems very specific. I mean, you've got symbols there, you've got a, you've got language there, for instance. Well, the, some of the um, symbols were uh, were available to look at from stills that were provided. We're not expert enough to know what the original hieroglyphics were, and in fact, the, 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 the imagery wasn't that clearly defined for us to be able to, 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 to emulate well, the palm it. palm prints, what's that about? Ah, uh, that's, um, um, probably a little bit of, um, artistic license. And here's the hard evidence. Genuine, top-of-the-range spaceship parts. Well, kind of. <laughs> So where exactly did Ray and Gary perpetrate their alien autopsy fake, uh, sorry, restoration? Would you have let that stinky old alien anywhere near your house? But somebody did. Somebody who lived in North London. After some persuasion, Ray, Gary and John agreed to take me to the location where the 1995 film was shot. So... Talk about returning to the scene of the crime. Oh, it's not a crime. It's you no crime. Are we going somewhere else? Yeah. But do you remember the scene, more importantly? Uh, uh, not very well, to be honest with you. Right. Um, Camden. Um, John, I think, probably knows... Yeah, I think it's in Rochester Square. Why are you so vague about this? I can't understand. This you know, probably the single most important thing in your professional careers. And everybody's so vague about it. It isn't vagueness as much as if you go to one place for the first time ten years ago and don't go back, it's not unreasonable that you can't remember where it and is. Also, and also, so you, we're not going to be 100% sure which house it is when we get there, if they all look the same. And one terrace house looks like the next terrace yes, house. Yes, that's very true. And you see little models in the shop and blow up dolls and all sorts of things of, of aliens with those big eyes, John. Do you sort of think, that's my creation, that's a breach of copyright? Do, do you guys own the copyright to... The alien face. Wish we did. Can, can, can you own copyright in, in something that is real? It's found yeah. here somewhere, uh, Gary. It was long here, I'm sure of it. Was it? What was the square what's, called? What Rochester. Got, what's this one that's here? Rochester Place. What's this here? That's Rochester something as well, look at it. Rochester Rose. Sure. It must be There's sure. Rochester Square over there. Yeah, yeah. Where? Yeah, look here. I'm sure it's over on that side, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's over oh, there. Oh. It wasn't Rochester Square. That's okay, we can go round. Yeah, we can go round. John, you've got an amazing memory. I'm glad one of you has. <laughs> so am I. It's one of these houses around here. So. Yeah. No, absolutely right. It's definitely in this in this square here. Just OK. Let's down. dismount and see if your memory can be refreshed anymore. OK. Aha. Ten years since you've been here, Ray. Yeah. Yeah, and it's certainly brings back a few memories and a few late nights. But uh, which one, which one, can you remember which one, Ray? Yes, I can. What's your worry, Gary, about identifying this house? I think it's uh, always protecting the people who are there, making sure the location 
is kept secret so ufologists and people don't drive them mad which it would be not fair to whoever lives there now. yes we are um we are there i think i think it's there yeah a lick of paint <laughs> yeah so so this is it without a shadow of a doubt absolutely you've never revealed this before it no. is in this very street in that very house absolutely that the alien autopsy was carried out the re the uh restoration Yes, absolutely. It even confuses you. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm very clear. In many ways, this then is the real Roswell. According to the boys, at least 95% of the autopsy footage ufologists have poured over for a decade was actually created behind one of these windows. And if I revealed the exact location, I'd probably have to kill you. Ray and Gary compare their work to that of the great Leonardo da Vinci, whose Last Supper has been restored several times. They describe their band of autopsy restorers as a team, friends bound by loyalty and pride in their work. Ray says the money they've earned from the film has been shared, and they spend some of it at glitzy secret reunions like this one in Las Vegas. What about the people who actually filmed your restoration? How have you kept them quiet for so long? I haven't kept them quiet. What's happened is that we're a very close-knit team of people and uh, we're great friends and um, um, there, there wasn't any difficulty in, in asking people not to talk. I think it was probably harder for people uh, or more on the technical side who um, received an awful lot of plaudits and, and congratulations from their world not to stand up and say it was me, it was me and, and they, it was probably harder for them. I mean it was in all the papers and front page of all you know, I mean, our leading papers, it was quite Were you amazing. not itching to say to somebody, I made that? Yeah, very much so, yeah. However hard it was not bragging about their successful reconstruction, it was harder keeping the press and UFO community off their backs. From the moment the film was shown, people wanted to know the true identity of the man who Ray claimed had shot the real autopsy film in the first place, the ex-soldier behind the camera. It was clear that an extra layer of subterfuge was required to throw them off the scent. This footage supposedly shows an interview with the real cameraman, but this guy was just a decoy, filmed by Gary in a hotel room in Los Angeles. And I have prepared a statement. He was brilliant. You know, he was a poor guy that uh, we picked up off the streets in L.A. and uh, got him into a hotel and uh, wash and scrub up uh, some prosthetics and, uh, and, and we got him to, to read a part. And the guy that did it, I think we made his day. I am the person who shot the film. I will not tell you my name, but I want you to know that I am not happy. How long did people believe that this cameraman was real? Well, it, it worked in total because the real cameraman was never found and I think the pressure to find him went off when the, um, the taped interview of the other cameraman was made available. So the plan absolutely worked and the guy that we found was fantastic. OK, so Ray and Gary have come clean about filming the autopsy in a flat in North London. But outside John the alien maker, they haven't told us about anybody else involved in the shoot, and the alien ain't talking. But this programme isn't called Eamon Investigates for nothing. Remember the guy behind the glass when you're about to meet him? Well, as days in your life go, Gareth, that one must have been pretty interesting. I do recall going to a house, a big house, I believe, in North London, not quite sure where. It didn't look particularly, um, wasn't a particularly salubrious area, the house was a bit of a tip. Went upstairs and there was this um, alien bean on a slab that looked pretty, uh, pretty lifelike. Pretty convincing. Pretty damn convincing, yeah. Did you, did you poke a prod or yeah, touch the alien? Yeah, well, yeah. take it home with me. And was it seen as a bit of a lark, or was it a serious restoration? From my point of view, it was a bit of a laugh, really. I mean, I was... I didn't really know too much about it prior to that. I mean, I think maybe they were protecting me or on a need-to-know basis. But I was literally drafted in to be the man behind the 
the mask on the on the day. And what were your instructions? How did they direct you? Two steps to the right and two steps to the left, and uh, don't blink. I think I think all you can see is is that. So Gareth, why you? Why did they choose you to be the technician behind the glass? It was either me or a six-foot blonde who worked in the office, of course. <laughs> and uh, I don't think. Uh, so you worked for who? I worked for Gary at the time. Ray Santilli, um worked in the same building. And he called you in one day and said, "Oi, I've got a proposition for you." Yeah, with a little twinkle in his eye. And I went into the office and um, you know asked me if I wanted to get involved. My choice. And when you left at the end of the day, uh, what happened? Did you just have a few drinks or did you all carry the body out to a car? Or... I think I left on my own, got a cab back to the office actually and thought, oops, what have I done? Straight on the phone to my mum, <laughs> you wouldn't guess what I've just done. Santilli and Shufield claim their latest version of events is the real one, which is all very well, but if I believe them, I have to believe there is a real alien autopsy film damaged beyond repair, but featuring, in whatever fragmented form, a real alien from outer space. If that's true, it's incredible. In Eamon Investigates, Ray Santilli and Gary Shufield have come clean for the very first time about the fact that they filmed an alien autopsy in a North London flat in 1995 and unleashed the infamous footage on an unsuspecting world. But despite admitting this, they maintain this film is based on a real alien autopsy shot in 1947 by an army cameraman at Roswell. And they still claim that a small part of it is actually real footage. I should have let it lie, but I couldn't. How much of the 1947 film was in that 1995 hoax or reconstruction? No, re restoration. Or restoration. Um, I'd say probably less than 5%. Can you identify those 5%? I think as, as you go through it, if you, if you watch it carefully, you, 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 can, you can see when, when it starts to, to, to fade out and light out, you'll see flashes come in. You can, I think it's, yeah. Mm. So at what point do we start seeing the recreated or the restored footage as opposed to what was original? I, I don't think any of us knows anymore. Oh, come on. No, because I think, Ray, well, Ray, you fill in, but there were different bits that were salvaged of the original yeah. film that come in at we different points. We worked with a series of stills, and um, the, the, the stills are within that footage, but, uh, um, you know, obviously the, the, the main part is, uh, is what has been created by us and by John. How many reels of the original film had you got? Uh, I took 22 reels off the original cameraman, and uh, that's what we brought back to London. And where is that film now? Um, the film now, for the most part, is in Germany. Um, I've got a few frames here, which I can show you right now. Which I think You've got them now? Yeah. Well, why, why do you keep the bulk of it in Germany? Because it's with the person that helped finance. And what are we looking at? What sort of stock is this? This is 1947 Kodak safety print. And here you can see some of the damaged frames from the original film. Can I, can I touch this? Yeah. And w why hasn't that degraded even further? Um, I, I think that um, it's been cared for since, um, um, since we first acquired the footage. But uh, I don't think you'll uh, be able to get much image out of there. I mean, there's certainly some. But you, you can see that there was enough for us to be able to create and rebuild from. There's an individual there at the crash site. I put it to you, once you'd seen that film, those images would be indelibly printed on your mind. You would know however good John's work was. You would know what the original piece was. You know, you're assuming that it's a, it's a solid image. It wasn't. The imagery was so washed out, it was, it was a struggle with each frame to, to see exactly what was there. Um, it was enough for us to be able to sort of backward engineer it and, and get John to create what he did. John, we're seeing um, organs being removed here. Um, do you recognise these as chicken giblets or...? I, well, to be honest with you, you I, I, I can't really remember. I mean, that, this bit may, that, may be the that original That crystal film. being pulled out, I'd say, is from the original footage. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. That's, not, that's not 
and then we're back to the back to ours. That There's a original. lot of white flashes, um, like there. Like that, a white flash, yeah. yeah. And, and, and you, see, you see glimpses of images like within that. that. Yeah. That sort of that's thing. And, and, and Very likely yeah, to be. Absolutely. And, and, and there, there are certain sections where you can immediately see a slight change in texture and, and so forth, and, and that's where you will see the blend. I suppose, in hindsight, being as exact as it is, we can look at all of this now and maybe say that maybe we were a touch irresponsible to do what we did and maybe we should have just taken the original film and just put it out there. But um, it wasn't, you know, we weren't, in, and I wasn't involved in the world of ufology. You know, my, my concerns were, were, were strictly commercial at the time because I thought it was a great opportunity. And I was looking at, at footage which really was a difficult sell and I thought, well, if we're going to make any money out of it, then we need to find a different answer, which is why we restored it. So just how believable is Ray and Gary's story that their film is a blend of reconstruction and reality? Was there ever a US Army cameraman with a top secret film? And if so, did Ray really get his hands on the footage? Gareth Watson, the man behind the glass in the reconstruction, certainly thinks so. Do you believe that that original film that the boys talk about was real? I believe there was an original film. I knew that there was this, this footage that um, had landed on Ray Santilli's desk where he'd discovered it somewhere in the States when he was trying to unearth some Elvis home movie footage. Um, I've seen the reels or the cans in his office. But it could have been a hoax in itself. It could have been, absolutely, You yeah. could have been part of a hoax of a hoax. I could have been part of, yeah, a, a double whammy. You're one of the very, very few people that has claimed to see Ray and Gary's original film. Mm. If, if you saw it and if you find it as mind-blowing as you did, mm. do you actually believe, then, there is something else out there, there are aliens out there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's stuff out there that we don't understand. In my opinion, there never was, never has been any original film whatsoever. Um, the only way to prove that would be to name the cameraman. But that will never happen because the man did not exist. He does not exist and neither did any original film. It's just, it's flim flam. <laughs> Since 1995, ufologists and TV documentary makers have spent time, effort and money scrutinising Ray and Gary's autopsy film. They've been concentrating on its detail, whether the telephones are from the right period or if the autopsy is carried out in a scientific manner. All of this detail we now know to have been, at best, reconstructed. We pass that information on to some of our interviewees. Really? <laughs> OK. So I was right, wasn't I? I think Ray and Gary have cheated a number of people, including myself, do feel let down, um, because if their now altered version of the truth is the correct version, then there is no reason why they couldn't have said that to begin with. They've made a shed load of money from this around the world, from organisations who have bought it on the basis that it's authentic. It may be the case that those organisations now want their money back, so we could see... Um, uh, Ray and Gary, you know, I don't know, dressed as uh, Metal Mickey out in the street busking soon. They've fooled uh, not just the UFO researchers, but they've fooled um, uh, the public, they fooled the media, they fooled the world. I'm quite sure there were people who really thought that they were seeing, seeing genuine piece of film that had come to light after all these years. Oh, well done, Ray. <laughs> I use the example, you know, the Italian job or Ocean's Eleven, you know. But it was like that because everyone had a valuable contribution. Mm -hmm. It was a military exercise and, and right the way through, from start to finish, it went through, it was flawless. And there's been quite a few comedy sketches there's on There's been TV, all kinds yeah. of things. I mean, like Simpsons. And yeah. for me, my <laughs> favourite moment is Seinfeld, seeing Kramer and Newman talking about the footage on an episode of Seinfeld was the finest moment for me out of the entire my, thing. My, my favourite is the Frank Skinner show, where the, where the surgeons start dancing and the alien gets up and joins them. I know, I mean, that, that is just fantastic. Well, Ray, it's been some experience, and it's a story that's not over yet. Any regrets? Anything you'd do differently? Um, um, the regret is that the original film didn't survive. I'm certainly proud, proud that we were able to bring something of that magnitude to the world. 
in a form that they could understand and it's something that tells me that there is life from other planets. You say now you're telling the truth about the hoax in ten years not time from the now. Restoration. Well this might be, you might be telling the truth about the hoax about the restoration. This could no. go on forever. Yeah, great. Long may it continue. Well it's a great story isn't it and hopefully I provided you with some of the answers to questions people have been asking for a long long time. We've told you who made the film, who starred in it, how they did it, where they did it. But there are a few questions which still remain unanswered. Was there really an original film? And if so, why reconstruct or restore it? Who was the cameraman who shot it? Is the truth simply that a bunch of mates got together to make a few quid by hoaxing the world? Or did they really get a privileged glimpse of an extraterrestrial? <laughs> Thank you.